The Retaliator is here, and today I want to go over my build for it. Hey everyone, Derpy here, and welcome back to another Battle Pirates video. A few things to say as I get started. First of all, all the builds I will show you today are linked in my build stock, which you can access 100% for free in the description of any of my YouTube videos. It is brought to you by channel members. If you like the videos that I'm doing and want to support, click the join button below the YouTube video. The other thing I want to mention is that this hole is pretty interesting. There are also a few issues with the flagship, which I'll talk about as I get going throughout the video. It is subject to change, especially because we have not seen the flagship yet, and we actually are not going to get the flagship in Strike 1, which is the first time we're using this, which is a huge bummer in my mind and is something that is not really well thought out by Kixai. Now, for that reason, we are going to want to build four normal ships before Strike 1 and get the flagship in the first raid. If you can save a handful of tokens for Raid 1, it's worth doing so. However, that's really difficult with the build pressure that we currently have. As I get into the build, I do want to briefly talk about the stats on this particular hull. It has 110 base armor points. The flagship is possible to come out with 115, 120. We don't quite know that for sure. Now, the difference in armor points is really only relevant for repair efficiency. In other words, if both the normal ship and the flag take, take three hours to repair, the flagship actually repairs a one hit point of damage at a slightly faster rate. And the other thing is King Killer. Now, if you don't remember what King Killer is, it's the opposite of priority targeting. It's where the enemy turret will shoot at the ship with the highest health. We've exploited this a lot, or really used it for its purpose intended mechanic, in previous raids where there's King Killer on turrets, to build out a flagship as an extreme evade tank, which has 120 million armor points, so everything shoots at the flagship first. As it currently stands, as of September 21st, there is no King Killer in this raid target, therefore that special thing with an evade flagship does not really work. There are a few other things that we can do to mitigate that heavy evade damage, which I would highly recommend watching the video I did on the VXP target teardown if you have not already, but we'll talk about the flagship towards the end of this video. The upgrades are nothing extremely exciting. Do one just gives you a CIC, which you have to one, do the upgrade, and two, refit the CIC on, so that's extra time, which is relatively annoying. There is survival granted at U2, which is decent. Splash doesn't hurt. Ballistic damage is fine. By the way, the ballistic damage doesn't double your damage. It adds 10% because it just modifies these base stats. We get an extra heavy armor at U3. We'll get another one for X1, and then U3 gives additional survival as well as evade. The evade here is really interesting. We'll get into that talking about shockwaves, and then building damage. Similar story just modifies the base stat. That's a little bit less than a 10% increase. Everything in the enemy targets is buildings other than the moving turrets. And yes, you did hear me say moving turrets. Check out the VXP teardown video if you want to know a little bit more. Now, there's nothing too crazy here. We have a decent amount of evade to start out with and checking under special abilities. Nothing too crazy, just the aura that all ships in the fleet get. Again, the flagship will have this as well. That's the stats out of the way, and let's talk about weapons. The first thing you'll see is that you can't even put countermeasures on here. It's all just standard weapons, which means you want to use the best options out of the limited ones you have, which is the PAC cannons. Now, you could use the regular one instead, the non-limited regular one. This is the common version, so you don't really even need to bother with this. Just put on the limited ones, the best option you have. And remember that if you get a better rarity one at a later system, you can refit within that same cannon for free. If I put on all uncommons, I can refit to a legendary when and if I get one. It's not necessarily worth chasing the points to do this, but it is possible if you do. But anyway, weapons, just put on the best ones out there, period. For the CIC, again, that's the FM CIC. There's not really a better option. Everything is pretty much whole locked at this point. I can't even click that to show you right now. For the armors, it's a similar story, although a little bit different compared to the weapons. You do want to make sure you put one of each on here in my mind. We don't know enough yet to know if ballistic is going to lean towards the damage type or radioactive. However, I would put on one ballistic and one radioactive. 
That way, if you have a ballistic one and you have a radioactive one, you can refit to the same type of armor instantly. If you change radioactive to ballistic, it won't work. But if you change radioactive uncommon to radioactive legendary, then that's going to work and you'll be able to do that. So again, just make sure you're using one of each on there and that when you change out, you stick with the same class. It's always possible that theoretically tilting towards something one or the other of a higher rarity or a higher, you know, different C versus R would get you better results, but again, we don't know enough at this point. Similar story for the heavy armor. When we start seeing these in the FM raid, pillage, strike, etc., you can start to add these as you get them. Stick within the same class for an instant refit. Now comes the fun part, which is specials. First special is obviously going to be an engine, and you might just look at pictures and say, hey, that one looks like an engine. That's not an engine, you'll still put it on there, but the engine is under limited, as they usually are, which is the Righteous Ire engine, 80k survival, and 120% combat speed. If you don't have this top one, it doesn't really matter, the tier 12 one, the tier 13 one, each of those would likely be okay, just make sure you're matching your combat speed. The only thing you'll do is lose a little bit of survival, which is really not the end of the world if you do that. So if you cut down to the tier 13 one, it's not going to be too bad at all because, you know, it uh, is just less survival, but the same exact combat speed. So just use the best one you have there. It's likely coming out in the TLC coming up in a few weeks along with the replacement for bounty if you don't have this one. The second special you're going to want to use is going to be a limited one that we're kind of recycling from an old tier. This is the full throttle exhaust. This gives you ballistic damage, evade, which is nice, as well as bonus combat speed. If you use this on one ship, you're going to have to use it on every ship in the fleet, unless you do something super wacky with an evade build, which I will show you, of course. We're going to bounce back over to Blueprint for the next regular special because I want to keep my red fiery ones next to each other. This is the red line switch, which gives you projectile speed, building damage, ballistic damage, all great things to have on this particular ship. And of course, there are replacements. Just search for projectile speed, building damage. This is essentially the third or fourth version of high velocity rounds at this point. You can use different specials on here. Just try and match the stats and use the best one as best you can. There's not a ton of weird stuff with ballistic in terms of what stacks and what doesn't. For the fourth special, we're going to go back to using our blue colored things and use the revenge cannon system or the r.v.n-g whatever you want to say about kick size naming conventions, they are creative. This is a nuclear accelerator's five or six at this point. It gives you ballistic range, splash, and damage. It's pretty nice to use, not a ton of other options. If, again, this does increase range, make sure you use it on all your ships, otherwise you won't be able to stack. Jumping back over to the limited, we do have a few other things we want to use. One that came out with the ship, which is the B or the 8, probably B13 cassette loader. This gives you cannon criticals, which works really well, although criticals are a little bit bugged. It always does double your damage, regardless of what it kind of says, which is kind of annoying that they do this. It should just say plus 100% damage. As far as I believe, it is still broken and works slightly less well than you'd expect, but that's really just how the game is. For the last special, you're going to use something pretty old, tier 11.5 Ballistic Battery 3, and that does building damage and yeah, ballistic damage, that's about it. That's the build that I'm sticking with for my damage ships. It is a pretty good, well-rounded option. If you built five of these, you would do totally fine, although I think that adding an evade ship will be an increase to this and will have your ships do slightly better. Now, the question is, which ship and why am I building an evade ship? To really answer that question, you need to watch my VXP target teardown video. And just briefly to summarize, there are a handful of turrets in that one, the Wendigo launchers specifically, that do accuracy-based damage in a massive shockwave, which means to mitigate that, you want to have a ship with high evade getting hit. The classic way of doing this is just to put it on the flagship with 120 million armor points and King Killer on the target, However, with King Killer not on the target, we need to either 1. Drive your evade ship slightly closer, 2. Have your evade ship have a shorter range so it gets closer automatically, 
three, have your evade ship have a higher combat speed so it's always barely in front, and that last option, maybe even the second one, a combination of two and three, is what I'm intending to do. Now the question is, which ship should you have as an evade ship? Most of you are probably going to put it on the flagship, which is fine. You'll still do okay at the end of the world. However, I am not putting on this on a flagship for two reasons. Reason number one, and by the way, as I say this, this may change as we go and get more information and get the flagship released and if Kixai changes things around, I wish they would stop doing that and have a design freeze when we need to actually build the ship, but it, this is my current plan. You can't put it on the flagship because the first time we use this fleet, the flagship does not exist. In Strike 1, the flagship does not exist. You cannot use the flagship because we don't have it yet at the time of the first event. The other reason is something that I'm kind of annoyed about, which is the Capital 1 or, or the X2 upgrade on the flagship. If you don't remember, this takes 19 days to do, and as an example from last month, there are 8 days between the second raid and Strike 3, and 10 days between Strike 3 and the third raid. This means that when the cap comes out in Raid 2, you can't use it in at least one of these events, if not more than that. Now tokens, 5-10 days worth, will help mitigate that, but it's still pretty annoying and, and I would wish Kixai would change this. I have asked three times now about it, and I was basically told on September 18th here, no response. And I was replying to a previous ask on, let's see... August 26th, where Drake said he could pass the request up, and the first time I brought it up was on August 21st, which is exactly one month ago today. I find it pretty uh, disconcerting that I've asked about this a few times. Kixai used to give us pretty good answers, but they don't. As it currently stands, and the point I'm bringing this up to reinforce, is that you cannot use the flagship in Strike 1 because it doesn't exist, and likely cannot use it for all of Strike 3, because you're upgrading it to cap. For that reason, and for the fact that there is no king killer in these targets, I am intending to build the flagship as a regular damage setup and building ship number five as a heavy evade ship. That's what I'm doing. You might read these differently, which is totally fine. Now let's go ahead and get into the build for the evade ship, which I'll reiterate for me is likely going to be one of the four regular ships. We're going to start out by using the engine because you want to make sure, well, let me do that. Let me uh, show you the, uh, the let's, uh, let's go ahead and look at the build for this one. Now, what I want to do right here is use the Righteous Ire engine. That's the same engine we're using on the classic standard ones. And this is important, again, because uh, you want to use the same combat speed. Now, if you don't remember, the combat speed on the normal damage ship was 87, which is the one we're going to want to match to. Special slot number two is going to be the highest evade special in the game, which is Guidance Scrambler 3. Now, you might try and use Agility System 4. Agility System 4 only works in PvP because this slow percentage, or the slow resistance and stun resistance, only help when it's a direct slow effect, such as the Disruptor Cannon in our old bases that would work, not the one in the PvP target, or PvE targets rather. This is only useful for Conquerors and Defenders. What you want to use is Guidance Scrambler 3. It has less build time and gives you 50% evade, which is the highest out there in the game. The next thing I'm going to throw on here is going to be a little bit controversial for some of you, but this is to make it an extreme evade ship, and it's to have it give it lowered cannon mount 2. This gives me a ton of evade, an extra 50%, but comes at the cost of combat speed, which means my weapons and everything like that needs to add back in combat speed to get this to get up to 87, which is where we want to be. Now, you can actually do this just alone with weapons. If you go ahead and put on a bunch of V mortars, these give 10% bonus combat speed each time. And actually, you can get to 89 combat speed which in my mind is a little bit too high here. So if I equip this all with V-Mortars, you can see that combat speed is up to, let's see, if I go to movement, is up to 91. Combat speed on the normal ships is at 87. Having 91 is a little bit too fast. If I do take off one of these mortars completely, you can see that now our combat speed exactly matches. 
if that's what you're going for, that's fine. However, I think that having like a 7.1, so this is always just barely ahead, would be the go-to. For that reason, I'm going to take the combat speed special right here, the mortar off. I'm going to type in combat speed and see what options I have for two special slots to get like 11% compared to 10%. One of those in the one on the thumbnail is to just add a D35S on the last slot and give it 5% extra. I think we can do a little bit better than that one though. If we take a look, there's a 5%, that's a 6% special right there. So if I add on a cryonic depth charge with, with a range of 74, that will not outrange the mortars at a range of 85. And I can put on a cannon here, if I put on the D35S, which has a low uh, build time, this ship right now is going to have a combat speed of 80, ooh, that's a little bit too low, 86.8. Um, that's not quite what I want. I want a little bit higher here. That's why I might, might end up going back to the mortar here. I'm interesting, interested why that didn't work. 6%, there's another 5%. I think the one to put in the thumbnail, unless there's an 8% out there, which I thought there was, a lot of this loves to not work. What I'd put in the thumbnail of using a, this should be 87% exactly, shouldn't it? Yeah, that's 87% exactly. If I change one of these out to be a V mortar, um, if I change one of these out to be a V mortar, I'll have slightly higher combat speed, which is what I'm going for. So this ship, which is again going to be number five, will now move. I was looking at evade before, wasn't I? We'll now move slightly further ahead. I should be able to drop this down to a 6% one now. I think I was just looking at evade instead of uh, combat speed, which are related, but not what I want to do. Okay, now if I look at this, this is 87.1. It should be slightly higher than this one because I have a 6% here and a 5% here. So this ship should stick out just barely in front of everything. I think in order to be safe and make sure that this actually does drive out ahead and just for simplicity's sake i'm going to stick with the v mortar on this one now what this means is that the range on this ship is going to be because there's no heavy weapon is going to be 85. the range on the standard ships that i'm building is 90 because they have a cannon with a range of 50 times the bonus 50 percent extender which is a range of 90 at the end of the day this is going to be 85, so it's going to be slightly faster and sit out in front, which means that it should get fired at by all the Wendigos more often than not. I will likely end up driving this in the targets which I intend to drive as a tank anyway, because I want the splash to go on to just one ship rather than all four. So this is going to be the most important ship to upgrade to U3 for the survival bonuses and evade, which is another reason to not do the flag. Now, we are not yet finished with this one in terms of the build. We can actually increase the evade even higher by using evade upgrade. You know, this is great. It gives you an extra 20% essentially, which is pretty good. Now our evade is up pretty high here to 93%. If you wanted to, you could even put on D5 EV armors and take off some of these weapons. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to put on the armors for this particular ship, the highest radioactive one I have, and the highest ballistic one I have, and then the same thing for the heavies as we do get there. This means that this will have a ton of survival. It will be sitting just in front and will arrive slightly earlier to the combat area than the rest of my ships. I will have to do a ton of manual driving for this one. It does appear that the short-range turrets are on moving rails, so they're going to end up hitting you anyway, which is pretty annoying. I'm kind of bothered by that one because this is a siege target, but that's besides the point. The point is that this is the evade build I'm going to stick with for the first raid when that does come out, or even the first strike, even ahead of getting the flagship. Now, if the flagship does change things or Kick's Eye adds King Killer, this entire build here is going to completely break. So if you think that Kick's Eye is going to have King Killer, I would probably put the bait on the flag. I don't think they're going to change it, at least without communicating that to us. Regardless, this will be the last ship I actually refit. And I'll spend most of my time doing upgrades to this ship and upgrades to other ones, save some tokens till the very end and right before Strike 1 to do all those changes. 
I know this has been a pretty long video, a lot of confusing stuff going on into this one. Most of you are probably just going to build five regular ships, which is fine. A few of you might have an evade flagship. I think most of you who build evade, evade ships are going to put that as the flag because we've always seen that. Without King Killer in the target and for the fact that we don't have the flag in Strike 1 or Strike 3, I think that evade on a normal ship is going to be the better option. Now, if you have any questions on this video, go ahead and let me know by giving me a comment down below, and I'll do my best to get back to you. I want to give a huge thank you to the channel members whose names are appearing on the end screen now. They're helping make videos like this one possible. With that said, and until next time, this is going to be Derby, signing out, helping you be a better pirate.